Okay. Fuck. Black Omens is super heavy, really dark, lots of cello. And I think the name sort of says it all with that with that song. It's it's uh I think it's the darkest of the record for sure. Alright, so this is Black Omen, motherfucker. Mmm. All these omens. Spooky. Black Omen, motherfucker. Too many spooky songs. Songs give me nightmares. Black Omens is really cool. It's uh, I just love hearing Jay on, on cello, <laughs> you know. So like when when you're kind of adding stuff, that's just it's just it's fun to be a part of that. And the intro is really cool. It's almost um, I want to say Middle Eastern, but some type of uh, you know the mode that's played in there is kind of that way. It's very dreamy with the with stuff that he's doing, and then when it just hits you in the face with the riff, it's uh, kind of kicks you in the balls, which is fun. The song itself, I think it goes with the title. It's an ominous feel, you know, uh, Black Omens, Things to Come. And I've said it before, uh, how Todd really captures um, vocally what's going on in his surroundings. Black Omens in the sky. So the song is can be taken very literally as to just, you know, the world is on fire, you know, it could be, you know, it's any, he would probably tell you the same thing, you know, people, you'll have your own interpretation of it, you know? Okay. Does sound rushy, doesn't it? I love it. Black Omens is straight up metal. It's evil. And, uh, but it does have a twist and turn in the bridge where it reminds me of a Rush song. Um, so there's a lot of influences that we're pulling from every different direction and uh, and kind of putting in the pot and, and making it work so it doesn't seem, you know, a transition isn't jarring. It, it, it works pretty smoothly. Black Omen sounds like... It's riffy like Seagrave uh, is riffy but expanded upon that um, super fast. It's in 6-8, which I like. I like the feel of 6-8. Um, it's got a, like a like a, like a metal-y sort of gallop to it. Yeah, it feels like it's a metal song if you got to categorize it, right? And I don't like just following guitar lines i like it when preferably when the bass is independent in melody and doing something more percussive if you would but melodic as well even touching on vocal patterns at times if it can you know um black omens was one of those songs that when i heard it immediately uh just the the uh with no bass the bass was playing in my head like just instantaneously um uh, and that was like, you know, for the intros and stuff like that. And then some interesting parts came along just through dabbling in mistakes. We were trying to be as very, have fun and be experimental with it. I sat in on it uh, last, actually, because of my scheduling and I was touring with the Obsessed and stuff. And I got in the studio after everything had been done, essentially, which never happens. And for me was... I loved it because I had so much, like I knew where to go or where knew not to go. When's too much, when's too little. Black Omens is, um, 
has what's called we call a like a fast over eight shuffle feel. So it's a dig it, 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 you know. Um, like think of uh, Rosanna, uh, uh, Rosanna from Toto, you know, the ticket, 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 that, that kind of like dotted eight sixteenth shuffle feel to it. Lots of ghost notes on the snare. It's really very aggressive, and I love the tom part in the in the verses. Playing with John is hearing John's uh, what he had down behind the stuff is uh, amazing and easy to follow and fun to play with you know so that one was just you know figuring out the notes that are just a little bit different than the guitar and the voicings um you know doing things like chord ascensions and and wherever we can you know like over the solos and things like that and um just really thinking about it and and trying to do the best we could with it and i think the the end result is just from front to back, you know, overall, it's great. I don't think there's anything that, that can compete with the level of um, metal that is going on in that one. And that song has a solo in it, too. Again, look at me, two guitar solos. Those are the only two solos in the whole record, though. So they're, they're, the, they're the singles, no more solos. That's all you get. It's, a, it's an ominous song, but then there's a video, which is not ominous. Well, it had it it could have been for a second you know but then it wasn't so it's uh it was kind of fun we we a and b those very well as far as the videos go um jason was really pushing for you know us to get together and, and put out a proper video which i mean at this day and age totally makes sense i'm kind of like uh Oh, uh, so a lyric video that people don't like those anymore. And he's like, dude, people want to see us playing. We need a legit video. And I'm like, yeah, I know you're right. I guess I'm just lazy. But, um, so, uh, what my experience with videos before not knocking any of them, as far as our videos, I don't think we've, we've ever had a video where I thought that we completely knocked it out of the park, uh, not any blaming anyone, but it just, it is, it's never been something that looks super slick and super pro. Um, grand experiment video, uh, the black omens video, they both look super pro. TJ directed that one as well. Um, and that one was shot on location, um, both here in my basement, um, which I turned into a scene from the exorcist. Um, with a with a twin bed and like and dry ice and like great lighting and creepy creepy shit everywhere it looks unbelievable on the on the footage it's crazy like my crappy basement um what we were able to do with that is really cool so the basement is like at 18 late 1800s early 1900s style like baltimore row home and the basement is you walk down the set of stairs that I'm surprised nobody has died from yet. Um, about six feet down to the left, it's dirt and it slowly goes uphill about 15 feet back. And there's, you just don't want to go back there. So we have a bed set up there. We have red lights under the bed. We got dry ice and um, it was actually shot in, in my rental property that Jason's renting uh, up in Baltimore in the basement. It couldn't be any creepier. Um, and um, you know, we, we can take responsibility for kind of coming up with the concepts, but um, we had a little bit of, uh, of makeup applied to me for the uh, Black Omens video, which is I'm basically the Reagan character from The Exorcist. And I'm in, so I had the makeup applied. I'm wearing the dress. I got the wig on the whole nine yards. Um, so we, we tried to come up with these fun concepts where even though Black Omens is, is a pretty heavy, you know, dark song, um, the video is, is really fun and I think will give people a laugh. So it's, it's uh, just the three of us. It's me, Brian, and, and Todd in the video. And I'm Todd's father. 
Um, and I actually wore the same old man mask that I had in the Grand Experiments video, um, which is kind of like a, I did it on purpose to kind of like tie like a crossover, like, you know, it's the, the, the old man that, that has a band that plays at the church also has a possessed daughter in his basement. So we put a bed down there and made this scene, uh, used a bunch of dry ice. Um, and it was just the four of us. It was, uh, me, Jason, Todd, and, um, TJ, the director. And we, I guess it starts out with the, uh, cello and the song. And Jason is actually playing the, uh, girl's father, uh, which is also a cameo from the grand experiments video. Cause he wears that mask in it. Oh, and it looks very sad and ominous and then, you know, sort of kicks in and then Jason gives a phone call to someone to come help and save the day. And that would be my character, the priest. Um, so I come over and then the thing is, I'm going to exercise the demons from, you know, this person, but not in a ritualistic way, you know, using, uh, the Bible and everything, I'm going to exercise him by taking him to the gym. So I wheel him in the gym in a trash can on a dolly. I rented a gym up the street, um, for part of it. So, and the theme for this one is, uh, father Wendy White, um, who's a, who's a, a, a priest and personal trainer. And he's, uh, his specialty is exercising demons. And he does that by running a, a possessed girl through her paces in the gym, um, which, is, which is Todd's role, of course. The whole time we did it, we were laughing our asses off. Like, it was hard to get takes sometimes, you know? We had the place to ourselves for like three hours and the windows granted on this, it's like, it's a decent sized room. And then there's windows that are all along like Howard street and, and down in Baltimore. So people are walking by go, what the fuck is going on in there? Cause they're seeing me with boxing gloves in that priest outfit, jumping on a trampoline and doing like the splits and stuff for a couple of seconds. People were just sort of like, what? And then they would look at Jason in a, in a gym outfit wearing the old man mask and then they'd see Todd and throughout the thing uh you know Todd's doing like sit-ups and coming up and throwing up literal like he was taking things of baby food and cold it and putting it in his mouth and I was like sitting there like whoa like the whole time and I'm holding his feet and I'm like you know go on like sort of you know uh Randy Savage sort of like on his like, you know, get your ass and he comes up and he pukes like the pea soup up all over. He's just got the pea soup all over himself through like the whole thing. It's funny. And Todd is like, he, it's like the role, the, the version of um, the version of the exorcist that he played is like the pissed off teenage girl who doesn't want to do anything, who's annoyed with life and everyone around her. So it's like her just, she's just mad at everything and like pu puking up pea soup and, and, uh, Todd's a funny dude. Let's let's just leave it at that. The guitar scene um, was brilliant. Jason, he's hanging upside down. I'm spotting him for a second, and I walk away. But and the thing is, the camera comes into him like he's like this, and then he has, he's holding his guitar. And then as he starts playing the solo and the song, the camera flips, and then it pulls back, and you see that he's hanging upside down in the gym. And then it goes back to him, and shoot, like right in it's this amazing shot i was blown away by how good they look i mean they they look as top notch as any you know gigantic band out there um they're super slick the lighting is killer the the place we the the, the sets were you know above and beyond my expectations um which i have to give jason most of the credit for he had a vision with all that we kind of all followed along but yeah man everything from the from the uh the the footage quality um the the way the the lighting everything just it looks far beyond anything we've ever done you bitches better look out i won't be taken lightly